we have been discussing the topic working out your own salvation in a series of videos each post each video post is self-contained and though they can be watched in any order it is suggested that they be watched in sequence for better understanding and benefit before we continue today let us briefly recap what we have discussed thus far in this topic in the four previous videos that is we should remind ourselves of the way of god with reference to the passage we have been looking at so far we have come to the understanding that we are to obey the word of god whether we are alone or with others whether we have someone to encourage us or not we are to grow out of any dependence on others or any servant mentality and walk in the light god has given to us each of us is to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling we have come to understand that this does not mean that we work to earn our salvation rather we work out our own salvation as we aspire and strive to be christ-like walking in obedience according to the light we have received from god through his word read under the power of the holy spirit in our daily living that is how we work out our own salvation in other words again we work out our own salvation by the way we demonstrate in our lifestyle what god is teaching us through his word by the power of his holy spirit the way we describe we we, we show our christ likeness every day as we progress in our spiritual journey may god give us understanding in jesus name we should understand and be encouraged by the truth that it is god that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure in other words what god demands from us what god commands us to do he has not left us to do alone rather he has provided the enablement through his word through his holy spirit that is resident in us and through the mutual ministry of one another amongst fellow believers and so it is important for us as god demands too that when we are doing what we are doing we are not to murmur we are not to engage in disputes either against or with god or against or with our fellow human beings rather we are to follow the ways laid down in scripture to address god and to resolve any differences with our fellow believers again all this lets us to know that god's way is not only the right way but it's also the only way because that is the only way that god had decreed commanded expected and that it will be acceptable unto him as we go about our daily activities it is god's way alone that leads to commendation and reward and so we are we continue our discussion 
of this series, Working Out Your Own Salvation, in this video, the fifth and the last in the series, by trying to answer the question, you are to hold forth the word of life, but are you? May God open our heart to his word and truly bring us to that point where every day in our activities we truly hold forth the word of life in the name of Jesus. And so, as has been our habit, we shall be looking at the word of God to learn what God has or is teaching us. And so, our anchor scripture Again, it's still from the book of Philippians chapter 2. Today, it will be Philippians 2, 16. And I read, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. My prayer to each and every one of us today is that as we continue in our journey of faith, we will not run in vain, and we will not live all in vain in Jesus' name. We're not going to look at the whole verse. Rather, we're looking at we're going to look at the first part, which is holding forth the word of God of life. And so we shall be looking at that and be asking ourselves, holding forth in a form of question. That is, holding forth what? We want to know, what are we to hold forth? How are we to hold forth? In other words, how do you hold something forth? Or what does it mean to hold forth? <clears throat> holding forth means to hold something fast or firmly. And in a way, that others will see it, or to show something to others to see. In other words, something that is open that others will be able to perceive. In this case, this is a metaphor or figure of language for demonstrating to the world around us the fact of our faith through a lifestyle of obedience to the gospel message and so it includes knowing the truth it is what you have that you can show others it is what you have that you can demonstrate and since we're talking in relation to god it can be anything else but the truth so to be able to hold forth we must know the truth in this white, that truth is the word of life. And so we know the truth. We hold on to it firmly and fast. We endeavor to keep it pure, uncorrupted. And we also put it into practice in our lives and in, the, in our dealings with others. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. It is our faith that we demonstrate to others as we go about our daily activities. And so, what is to be held for is not just anything, but the word of life. I know in real life, and many of us would have experienced this, People hold forth or they demonstrate and show to others what they are proud of. It may be some material thing, maybe a new dress, maybe a new house, or a new vehicle. It might even be something like promotion, a breakthrough in some area of business. It has is something we value that we want others to know about. And we not only want them to know about, we want them to comment we want them to rejoice with us. And now, when we do this to things that are temporal, when we expect that, then 
It shouldn't be difficult for us to do it for things that are internal, that are of inestimable value, like the word of life. And so when we are proud of material things, it shouldn't be difficult for us to be proud of spiritual things. So the verse is not talking about something that is temporal. Rather, it's something that is internal. Again, I can't repeat that enough. That is of inestimable value. But the question then arises, you know, each of us can relate to our experience of the things we are proud of. But then, how proud are you to be seen or be identified as a Christian? Put another way, are you proud of your Christian identity? How much effort do you make so you can be seen? as enjoying being a Christian. In other words, do you struggle to be seen as enjoying being a Christian? Is your Christianity a, a, a form of struggle, pretense, or a hypocritical way of living? You do things only so others we got, we have a particular picture of you that you know is not true. So it is very, very important for us to recognize again, this verse is speaking of the word of life and not of some material thing that is of temporal value. If some believers are so proud of material things, then you wonder why they are not so proud of their faith in Christ that is eternal. And Christ said, if we deny him, he will deny us. May we not deny him in the presence of men, and may he never deny us in Jesus' name. What is the word of life? Yes, that's a question. Because before you know, so, before you can show something, you must know it and then you must have it. The gospel is described in so many ways in scripture. The gospel is the word of internal life. Yes, the word of internal life. Remember again, we're talking of the word of life. The word of life is the same as the words of internal life. John 6 68. It is called the words of this life in Acts 5.20. It is the word of God that endures forever. It is the word of God that is the gospel. 1 Peter 1.25. As we are told, it endures forever. And by it, by this gospel, by it the gospel is preached, and by it we are saved. It is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1.16 This again are some of the ways the word of God is described in scripture. It is that same word of God that is the word of life. Because the word of God gives right, rise to life. It is the word of God that brings the, deliver, the, the believer through the power of the Holy Spirit into salvation. Yes, by which believers are born into a new life. Again, 1 Peter 123. So we see now as we continue that the word of life is another way of saying the gospel. Again, 
to buttress our understanding and to encourage us, we want to look at some attributes of the Word of God. This, many of us may already know, but it's important for us because we must have confidence in that which we are to stake our lives upon. There is nothing like the Word of God. And so, here are a few of the attributes of the Word of God. It is perfect and converts the soul. Yes, the Word of God is complete. That's the only thing we need for salvation. It is sure and makes the simple wise. The Word of God is always the truth. The Word of God is always a solid ground upon which we can stand in any situation and in all circumstances. The Word of God is right and rejoices the heart. Our God is the right God. Our God is the only one who is true. And so naturally, he cannot speak what is wrong. All that comes from God are true. They are right. And so they rejoice the heart. The word of God speaks to our heart. And so when God tells us the truth, that the love of Christ has been shared abroad in our heart, that we have been given the joy that is unspeakable, we feel that joy in our heart, but it should not just stay there in our heart alone. Issue from our heart radiate to others. I pray that you will radiate the joy of God in Jesus' name. The word of God is pure and enlightens the eyes. Our God is a pure God, is holy. There is no iota of corruption in him. We are told that there is no darkness in God. There is no variableness. God does not vary. God is, is so pure that is beyond our imagination to be able to imagine. And he is the one who enlightens the eyes. That's why we are told that the entrance of his word brings light. It brings understanding. And so, again, these are some of the attributes of the word of God. The word of God is clean and endures forever. God lives forever. So naturally, his word, we also live forever. God is clean. is clean beyond what we can imagine. And whatever comes from God is also clean and endures forever. In other words, whatever God has said, as Jesus said, is the word is spoke and it still speaks, they are life and they endure forever. The word of God is true and righteous completely. It cannot be otherwise because God alone is righteous. God alone is true. God alone is complete. God alone is completely free and independent in the deepest meaning of those words. He is completely independent of his creation. But all his creation, including us all, are completely dependent on him. So his word is true and righteous completely. All this we can find in Psalm 19 verses 7 to 9. The word of God is to be desired than gold and is sweeter than the honey. It can be, it is by that the believer is warned and in keeping them there is great reward. It can be otherwise. 
if the word of God has the, has all the attributes that we have just enumerated, and remember this is just a sample, this is just a few, it's not all. When you know, I will encourage you indeed that in your spare time, go through scripture and look and add more to this small list of the attributes of the word of God. And these are summarized in the New Testament in Hebrews 4.12. Yes, I read that to us. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart that's how powerful the word of god is but the question may also be asked is it working in your life in other words can you it can it be that you are just a christian by association and not by genuine conversion experience in an encounter with Christ. Put another way, are you a genuine believer in Christ? This is crucial, it is critical. Please don't begin to use how long you have been in church as the yardstick. There are testimonies of people who have been in church for years some have even been preaching the gospel. They have been in the pulpit. They've been teaching until they encounter Christ. Meaning all the while they were preaching and doing the so-called work of God, they were not known by that God. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Or you are a Christian, but the world and your circumstances have choked the word of life out of your life that's a possibility too perhaps you are so taken off by your material possessions or by your earthly pursuits you are so ambitious you are so preoccupied with the things of the world that you don't have any time to nurture your spirit to dwell in the word of god and so now you are just a Christian by name. Please take this seriously. Find time and reflect. Remember, we are talking of the, prob the, the, the issue of life and death. We are talking about the word of life. Apart from the word of God, all other type of words are words of death. May you receive the word of life and live by it in the name of Jesus. And so, the word of life is very precious to God and should be precious to you and indeed to all who belong to God and love God. That is, every child of God should trust and be given, you know, in the word that has been given to God, I mean by God to us, every one of us who trust in God should endeavor to keep that word pure to avoid letting it get corrupted so we should live in a way and manner that others can see God's presence in our lives and you watching this look at yourself reflect can people see you and see christ in you i'm not talking of perfection yes no matter what we do our flaws we still show forth but there are certain things that people will see in you and they will know you are different so you should live so others can see cry god's presence in your life and may God help you to achieve that in the name of Jesus. Remember, other believers before us have lived to the level 
by faith that people recognize God in them, that God himself commended them, you know, for their living according to his grace and mercy. Remember the case of Joseph, Genesis 3, Genesis 39, 3. We are told that even his master, an unbeliever, knew God was with him. They we know of the case of Daniel 6, 4. We know that he was a member of the government of the ungodly, but he still kept himself pure by the power of God in the midst of the ungodliness around him. In third John 12, we are told of Demetrius. We are informed that Demetrius had good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we do we also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. Third John twelve. Brother, sister, can this be said of you? I know we are still on the journey. So it's never too late for us to amend our ways. And I pray that God will help you to get to that level where you can, as the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. And if by any chance you are already sleeping off, that you will awake and reestablish your relationship with God. Remember again, our motivation is and should be gratitude from a grateful heart. God has done so much for us. So we have every reason to be grateful. And so we're not doing things and we should not do things because we are afraid of going to hell or because we are afraid of being uh, punished by God. But we should look at all the great things God has done for us. And with our heart filled with gratitude, we should show that gratitude to God. We should show we are grateful. Thus we, by obeying him, may God help you to get to that level in Jesus' name. And so, again, we have seen the life, the word of life, what it is, and we have seen some of the attributes of this word. And many of you watching this are already believers in Christ, I believe. But it is also important that you know how to hold forth this life. We have attribute, we have alluded to this a bit previously. But just to again buttress the whole point, we look at again and try to answer that question. How are believers to hold forth the word of life? Again, we need to be reminded before you can hold forth the word of life, you must have the word of life. In other words, you must be born again. You must have genuinely encountered Christ and been given the new life in Christ. Yes, before you can hold forth anything, you must already be in possession of it. And so the question is, are you born again or you are just a church goer? Are you a Christian by association or by real personal experience of Christ? Please don't wave off this. I can't repeat those questions often enough. Because Christianity is a personal religion, it's often times is easy for people to deceive themselves, to say they are Christians where they are not, because people cannot see their heart. And please remember, 
why you may deceive fellow human beings like yourself. You cannot deceive God, who is all-knowing and all-seeing. And may you not fall for the deception of either yourself or for others, in the name of Jesus. And so it is very important that as a believer, you develop the character that is in line with the new life that you have received according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Remember, they that are in Christ, they are new creatures. The old things are passed away, all are become new. And this will suggest then that it is action time. Remember, before you became a believer, you were a servant to sin, to the devil and the world. They ruled over your life, and it was nothing difficult for you to obey. Now that you are in Christ, it is an exchange of masters. You served those wicked masters before, but now you have a, be a benevolent master in Christ. Whatever he demands from you, he gives you the enablement to do. There is responsibility that belongs to God, but there is also responsibility that belongs to you as a believer. You have not been delivered to be your own master or to serve yourself. You have been delivered to serve the best master in the whole universe. And so you walk towards his service. And so it is very, very important. Some of the things that you are asked to do, you are commanded. Do not yield your members as instruments. Romans 6, 19, I mean 13, and also verse 19 as well. I will not be reading many of these, but the thing what this passage is saying is that before you were a believer, you were using the word there, your members, is a metaphor for your different parts. You know, you use your hand to do things that are bad. You use your eyes to see things that are terrible. You use your, your heart to think terrible things. You acted in ways that are ungodly. You are using all the different parts of your body to do all these evil things. That's what you were doing as an unbeliever. And those are the things the Bible describes as unrighteousness. So you are like a tool. You know what you do with tools. For example, when you want to eat, you use a spoon. You use a, a knife to cut your meat. Those are tools in your hand. And those tools, they yield to you. They obey you. Where you turn, what you want to use them for is what they do. There was a time you were like that in the hands of the devil the world and your selfish interests but now god's grace has found you you are now in christ so those same members the same hand the same eyes the same mindset you now turn over to god as instruments of righteousness may god enable you to do this in the name of jesus again Believers are commanded, come out from among them. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Yes, you should be separate from ungodliness. You should be separate from evil. So God says, do not touch anything that is unclean, and he will receive you. May the Lord receive you in the name of Jesus. Remember, these things are habits that you and many others, including myself, in our ungodly days, have been used to. We enjoy it, and you are still enjoying. And they have clung to us. They are not things that you can wish away. You easily can just uh, swat aside because they have clung to you for so long. So some degree of force, some degree of consistency, some degree of determination are needed to truly get rid of them. And so, forceful words are used. Yes, 
the type that connote military action. And so we're told, mortify your members upon the earth. Again, remember, he's talking about our living in the world. It is in this world, though we have been delivered from uh, sin and its dominion, but we still live in the presence of sin. We still live within the evil world. The devil and his cohorts will not leave the believers alone. And so there are all manner of enticement to sin and to displease God will always come. That will not be happening in heaven. So we are being told now why we are on this earth. Again, the Bible does not speak in vague language. Specific examples are spoken about. Like in this verse now in Colossians 3, 5, certain things are mentioned. It's fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And so we cannot claim to say, uh, to, not to know. We cannot say, well, I don't really know what it is to mortify my body. I don't really know what displeases God. Unless we want to lie and the truth is not in you. And may you not lie. May the truth in you be a witness so that you begin to take action against all these things in Jesus' name. We're told to put off, put off former conversation. Former conversation there speaks of, it's a gay figure of speech for lifestyle, habits that you have been engaging in, the way you have been living your life. Is another word is the old man, the corrupt, deceptive lust, Ephesians 4, 22. It's as if the Bible wants to make sure, God wants to make sure we understand. So these things are described in so many different ways so that we can understand. I may the Holy Spirit give you understanding in the name of Jesus. And so he continues specifically again, some, has, some more has said in Colossians 3, 8, put off all these. There is no exception. All of them must be gotten rid of. And he again gives some examples. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You see, God who knows all, he knows you. So you cannot pretend that these things are not there. If you try to deceive man, you cannot deceive God. My prayer is that you will not continue to be deceiving and to be deceived in Jesus' name. Remember, if you look at some of those words that have been used, they are serious words. They are military things. It's telling you it is action time. Forceful words, active action words are used. Cast off, put off, mortify, tear out. Again, letting you understand that these things hold to people tenaciously. You need some level of force. Again, the battle is not against others. It's against the things that have taken hold of you. The ways you have lived your life. The ways you have thought was okay. But which now, by God's grace, you have discovered is not okay. May God give you understanding in Jesus' name. Again, remember, these are commands. They are not advice. They are not suggestions. They are not some options out of many. God's word is not suggestive. God's word is authority, authorizing you to do the right thing. And may you do the right thing in Jesus' name. What is anger? Again, this is trying to let you see how you should reflect on these things, not just wave them away. You ask yourself, what is anger? Why does it come? How do you overcome it? 
you are in the particular situation is anger your problem and so you ask yourself why does it why do you get angry what situations bring your anger and then how do you overcome it that's just an example and then the other one examples of filthy communication from you can you remember the ways the kind of ungodly things that come out of your mouth what causes them how do you get rid of them again these are practical things action things there's a place for prayer there is also a place for action and may god help you to overcome in the name of jesus it is very very important you know looking at all this you may feel discouraged it may seem overwhelming but it is important for you and for every christian to recognize this you are not alone god has not left you alone he knows you more than you know yourself he knows the challenges you face and so he has not left you alone you are not there on your own even when you are alone physically maybe in your room in the park or some other place where you think other human beings are not there you carry if you're a child of god the presence of god in the person of the holy spirit and we're told also that his angels again they are holy and they excel in strength and they are wise they are powerful they encamp around his own so in reality though physically you may feel alone spiritually you are not alone his holy spirit is there and the holy spirit is not just quiet the holy spirit is there to lead you to guide you to teach you to train you to rebook you to correct you to sensitize you to the things of god and so as you get more and more sensitive to the holy spirit you also become more sensitive to spiritual things you also begin to recognize things that are ungodly and you begin to receive strength to walk away from them to resist again of course the word of god is there the word of god is eternal it god the word of god we're told god has raised his word he has lifted up his word he has raised up his word against his name above his name the word contains all that you need as a child of god for your faith and every aspect of your life the word of god is complete none nothing can be added nothing should be taken away from it i may the lord god almighty truly continue to uphold you in the name of jesus again it is important for you to recognize the problem is not external often times when we talk about the gospel when we talk about the word of life when we talk about obedience when we talk about doing things people talk about external things that they see as the obstacle as the hindrance they even use words like the stronghold but hardly do people look at themselves but the word of god makes us to understand your heart is at the heart of the matter and you can understand why god is so particular about the heart because it is the center of all our dealings remember this the root is in the heart not the heart of the other person but your own heart and not other person yes we do blame others for things people do do things for us but a lot of times it is not that person but how we think in our heart it is you the believer that needs to deal with yourself with the help of god why using all the resources god has provided to you to fight the battle yeah it's a battle is every day your environment the devil the world wants to derail your walk of faith 
It is you that have to resist. God has his part, you have your part. You can be assured of this. God will always play his part. And God expects you to play your part, not alone, but with his help. And may you avail yourself of the help God has provided in Jesus' name. If your defense armor is not breached from within, no one can breach it from outside. Remember the case of the Israelites? God was protecting them. The enemy knew that God will not renege on his protection. But the enemy also knew that God hates sin. And it is sin that can break the hedge of protection. And so what did the enemy do? He enticed the Israelites to sin. And so they were breached from outside. As we are told in the case of the children of Moab, we are told that Balaam enticed them to go into idolatry and fornication with the women of Moab. And God was angry and destroyed some of them. The same tactics still going on today. The enemy knows that in a frontal attack, he will not be able to overcome you. So he hides under things that you enjoy, things that look innocent, to entice you to sin. But the closer you walk with the Spirit through the power of the, uh, the, 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 the closer you walk with the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, the more sensitive you will be to the antics of the enemy and you will escape his traps. And may you continue to escape his traps in Jesus' name. Again, remember, take active, sustained, and persistent action to root out all the filth from its root in your heart. This is very, very important. The root is in your heart and not the other person. You need to understand this, accept it, and begin to act. Remember again, the law makes us to understand out of the good treasure of the heart. In other words, the good man will bring out good things from his heart. The law makes us to understand that the things that enter us are not the things that defile us. The things that defile us are the things that come from our heart. And many of these other things that we have been talking about, like anger, fornication, the Lord makes us to understand. They come from our heart. Another way I can think about it is that whatever you want to do, you first of all think about it before it becomes an action. And so we are to be people whose heart is filled with the love of Christ, whose heart the Word of God is renewing and transforming. And so only good things will come out from our heart. And may that be your portion in the name of Jesus. We are commanded, again, it's not a suggestion, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. One can say it enough, watch what you think. Watch what you think. Because unknowingly, some of the thoughts you may have may not be truly yours. It may be you subconsciously yielding to the enemy. May you overcome in the name of Jesus. We are commanded, be not conformed to this world. The world is ever wanting to mold us into its own image. But remember, you are made in the image of Christ. And you are to remain in that image. You are to refuse to be conformed to the world. And we are told how by being transformed, by the renewing of your mind. Yes, how do you renew your mind? You take in the word of God. You pray. You cooperate with the Holy Spirit. You don't pretend you cannot sin or you cannot do bad things. You recognize that it is the power of God that enables you to walk the walk of victory every day. 
And so you stay close to the word of God. You do your best to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So it is very important. Again, we are told, let the word of Christ dwell you in you richly. Again, as we have seen, the word of life is the word of God, is the word of Christ. Christ said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And with the more that word dwells in you, the more life there is in you. I want you to understand this. The more of the word you have in you, the more your faith, the more your capacity to resist. And so may the word of Christ dwell in you richly in the name of Jesus. Here we are told, we are given this again. These are practical things. We are not made to stop thinking. One big difference between the so-called meditation of the East and the true biblical meditation, you are never commanded to blank out your mind. Even when you are sleeping, your mind is active. And so what the Bible says is that whatsoever things are true, in other words, take control of your thoughts. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. In other words, you won't stop your thoughts, but you can control what you think about. You can decide. And again, as I've been said so many times, you cannot pretend not to know what God does not want and what God wants. What is required is you dwelling more on those things that God wants. And the more of those things that are in you, the less of the unwanted things that will be there. May God grant you understanding in the name of Jesus. It is very, very important, again, to hold forth. Remember, to hold forth the word of life. It is very, very important. The believer in Christ are to shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. Philippians 2, 15 to 16. In other words, the believer is to know the word of life. Keep it pure. Leave it and hold it forth for others to see. One cannot say this enough. It is speaking of the lifestyle that you are to have. So be sure you know and have the word of life. It is very, very important. Be sure the word of life is pure and uncorrupted. Yes. Be sure you are living a pistol of the truth of your belief. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be deceiving and don't be deceived. It is very, very important. Be earnest in the acquisition, the practice, and the dispensing of the uncorrupted truth. As much as possible, don't keep the truth to yourself. Share the gospel. Whether you can speak, speak. If you can't, let your lifestyle be a demonstrating testimony to your God that is inside of you. This is the whole issue of you holding forth the word of life, shining as light in the midst of the darkness of this world. May God give you understanding and help you in your spiritual journey in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding 
we can see your heart and the unspeakable joy that he alone can give will be yours as you continue to do your best to know and to please the God of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. But what if you are not yet a believer in Christ? Yes, what if you are not yet a believer in Christ and as such not yet a member of God's household? Please understand all that we've been talking about pertains to believers in Christ. Yes, those who are the children of God by adoption through the finished work of Christ on Calvary. They are the ones being addressed here. They are the ones who can be talking about the word of life. But if you are not yet a believer, you are not left on your own. God has not forgotten you. You can become born again. You can become a child of God. You can have access to the provisions God has made for his own. And so, to do that, you have to accept the testimony again of the word of God. God who created us all has assessed us all. And his verdict is that all have sinned and have come short of his glory. Romans 3.23 He says he is the creator and as such he determined that the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 Remember that God is the authority. Is a single majority. Whatever he says goes. And so, this is God's opinion. We all fall short. It doesn't matter your righteous act. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your level of education, your tradition. Whatever accomplishment you think you have made in life. All those things, they hold no water before God. Is all without exception have sinned. And it's the one who said the soul that sins, that soul shall die. But again, God is the God of initiatives. He knew man was sin and he made provision. And so God knew the sinner cannot save himself. And so he made provision for reconciliation. Yes, there is nothing you can do to save yourself. World works of philanthropy, building churches, helping others, all those things, good as they may be, they cannot save you. Only blood can atone for sin. Again, that is the decree of God. And the blood that can save you can only be provided by God. And he has already done that. Why you will remain in sin? To show us his love. To show that he still loved us. While we were still sinners, he commended or he demonstrated that word, that, that love, by making his son Jesus Christ to die for us. Romans 5 8. He did not wait for you and me to clean ourselves. He did not demand that we do a certain level of uh, work before. He said we should come as we are. Indeed, we are told, John 3.16, that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes in Christ, they will be saved. That's the word of God to you. It's important, again, how do you then become a born-again child of God? He said, again, it's simple steps. Confess and believe. Romans 9, 9 to 10. Yes, it says there that if you will confess 
with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Again, Romans 9, 9 to 10. Further, Romans 10, 13 tells us, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no exception. So, brother, sister, what are you waiting for? Please arise today. Pray that the Savior, Jesus Christ, should save you and become your Lord now. Yes, the Savior and Lord Jesus Christ is calling you now. You may be wondering how I know that. Again, it is from the Word of God. Yes, he is the one calling you, not me. The Lord Jesus Christ is calling you now. Hear him. He's telling you. And this is what he says to everyone. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and lean of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. Yes, and I pray and I encourage you to appropriate the finished work of Christ and confess him as your Savior and Lord. Now, please do not delay becoming a child of God any longer. Come to the Savior and Lord Jesus Christ now. I pray that God will accept you into his household through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.